have created our table here employee and we have inserted some records into the table so let's see the records in the table so there are 10 records in the table employee and i have different columns in the table employee id first name last name gender birth date department position salary and hire date now what the problem is say if i want to insert a new row and the error is value is too long for type varchar 10 and what are the varchar 10 columns department and gender so if i look here into the new row the gender is coming as male which is less than varchar 10 but the department is coming as administration which is more than varchar so what I have seen is generally the freshers who join the team, what approach they follow is they simply drop and recreate the table. So they'll just copy the table definition. They'll write a drop statement and then they'll create the table again with varchar say 15 and then they'll just execute it. So what they'll do, they'll drop this table They'll create this table again with varchar 15 as a department and then they'll insert this row. Now here, as per this example, we are dealing with 10, 11 rows. It is fine. But when it is a production system, a table can have millions of rows in it. This approach is probably the worst approach you can do. I will never encourage to drop and create table in production until unless the table is empty. Now the problem with this here is if I'll query this table now, there is just one row, which is the 11th row, right? But where are 1, 1 to 10? These rows are gone. Now to bring this row into the table, you have to run this insert statement again, right? And now if I'll see my table, it looks good, right? All the 11 records. Now imagine a production scenario where a table has millions of rows in it and a new row came from the source in your ETL pipeline and it failed because of the varchar length error and you ran a drop and create so the current file or the current data you can load after running a drop and create with the increase width but what about the data which was loaded over the period of time now you have to run that etl pipeline again say a table has one year of data now you have to run an etl pipeline for that one year of data my point here is Never run drop and create in production table until unless you are pretty sure the table is empty or the table is a static table with just one file, one time load you have to do in that table. The other better approach is, so what I will do is I'll create this table again with the actual data type and I'll load the table data again. Now this was the row which was giving me the error, right? So this varchar 10 is small and we need at least varchar 14 or 15. So what approach I will do is solution one I will propose is you run an alter statement, alter table employee, alter column department type varchar 15. And I've done that. Now I will just go here. I'll run this query and that's it. So, you know, this is the safest approach. If you have to increase the width of a column in your table, this is one of the safest approach. You can run an alter statement. Do not run drop and create. However, from my personal experience, I have seen if the table is very big in terms of the number of rows it has and it's a very wide table, the alter table sometimes the command is stuck. By that, I mean the command will continue to run even for 30 minutes, one hour, and you are like having no clue what is happening at the background. In most of the databases, what is happening at the background is they're creating a replica table with a new varchar type, and then they are loading that replica table and then replacing this actual table with that replica table. So rather than your database doing it, it may not be very efficient you can implement the similar solution by yourself. So what you will do here is, you will create a table. I'll just copy this definition. And this time we'll make it varchar 15. And let me name it as employee underscore new. So we'll create this new table. And then we load this table, insert into, before I proceed, I'll just, create this table again, I'll just 
create this table again because right now the table has 11 records the new record is also inserted after running the alter statement right so we don't want to do it we want to replicate the same scenario so yeah so it is failing right so we'll come to our solution two what we will do is we'll increase the var care type to we'll increase the var care length to 15 we'll create a new table employee new and then i'll insert into employee new select star from employee so basically we have created a replica table with a new length just run this command to show you the data in the new table and you see here it has 10 records in it now what i want you to do is run an alter statement to rename the tables so alter table employee rename to employee underscore original okay and what i want you to do is alter table employee underscore new to employee and now if you will run this insert statement this is perfectly fine and i will just run the query again on employee table and you see the 11th record is also inserted now you have a backup table which is employee underscore original before i close this video i want to share a few more points and which will exhibit your more dive deep thought process so what you can do is after verifying the data in the new table if it looks good to you what you can do after some time is you can drop the original table so you know that now you don't need this table the current data table is looking good so you can drop this table so you don't have too many backup table also what you can do is you can grant the privileges privileges explicitly to new employee table right so when you are creating this table you should write the grant privileges command as well to whatever the roles group users you have in your production system and grant them the proper privileges so that this table does not face any issues while reading the data or writing the data by different users and groups so this is all about this video i wanted to cover make i just want to tell you that do not use drop create in production use alter statement or create a replica table with updated structure load the new table with the existing data and then just rename those tables so this is a more safe approach very less risk in it and you should try to use this in your production system.